Hello, my friends of the Psychedelic Renaissance. It's Tom Hatz as your Psychedelic Historian, and this is the Good Friday Experiment. On Good Friday, 1962, 20 Harvard Divinity students assembled in the basement of Marsh Chapel under the direction of Walter Pankey, a PhD candidate who used what has come to be called the Good Friday Experiment as partial fulfillment of his doctoral requirements. He wanted to see if psilocybin could produce religious ecstasy in a carefully orchestrated environment. His laboratory, so to speak, would be Marsh Chapel, complete with a sermon given by Reverend Howard Thurman. Pankey had commissioned none other than Timothy Leary to oversee the experiment. Joining them was MIT Philosophy Department Chairperson Houston Smith and Professor Emeritus of Psychology at Andover Newton Seminary Walter Clark. I'd like to offer a brief overview of what happened that day and address the nuances of this most famous experiment. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Psychedelic Historian YouTube channel and make sure you hit that little bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. Also, let's link up on Instagram. Please find me at Psychedelic Historian. And we do have a private Facebook group, the Sanctum Psychedelia group, where we talk about all things wild and weird. We'd love to have you join that conversation. With all of that out of the way, let's get into it. As we currently resurrect the psychedelic renaissance, I feel that it's important to understand historical precedents. The Good Friday Experiment offers us a modern test in psychedelic mysticism, and I believe that there's a lot we can gain from that. Spiritual experiences are difficult to gauge. The metric that Pankey used actually comes from the Princeton philosopher W.T. Stace, who outlined seven criteria for determining the authenticity of a spiritual experience. I won't go over all of them here, but three of them are unity, which includes both wholeness of the self and the realization that you are part of this larger whole of humanity. A sense of the sacred, meaning that something becomes so special to you that it can actually be profaned. And objectivity and reality, meaning that while the experience might seem illusory or somehow not real at all, it's actually as real as hugging a puppy. <laughs> But there was a problem. Dana Farnsworth, then director of the Harvard Medical Service, had seized all of Leary's supply of psilocybin. Leary had lost his psilocybin privileges after giving his pills to the beat poet Allen Ginsberg and his partner Peter Orlovsky. Leary was not supposed to be testing psilocybin in his home. Instead of submitting to academic protocol, Leary got his hands on some psilocybin and moved forward with the experiment anyway. And so, on Good Friday, 1962, the group assembled in the basement of Marsh Chapel. The experiment would be double-blind, meaning no one, including Panky and Leary, would know who received the psilocybin and who received the placebo, which was a pill of nicotinic acid that has mild somatic effects. As one can imagine, the double-blind nature of this study was totally pointless because within an hour, everybody knew who had the psilocybin and who had the placebo. Leary claimed it a glorious success, saying that the psilocybin-receiving participants sensed that a time for a new humanist religion based on intelligent, good-natured pluralism and scientific paganism had arrived. As ever, Leary was exaggerating. No participant spoke of any kind of new scientific pagan age or anything like that at all. At least, nothing in the surviving documents we have, other than Leary. In fact, according to Rick Doblin's follow-up study, only two of the psilocybin-receiving individuals, or those in the experimental group, actually had a totally positive experience. The other eight participants all had moments where they felt like they were going mad, or dying, or both. In fact, one of the students who received the psilocybin remarked, The other thing I found unique that wasn't talked at all about in what I read, at least in the thesis, was that it was all on the positive upside. Though we should note that the scores show that the students mostly felt it a positive overall experience. Interestingly, while Pankey's metric measured a broad concept of spirituality, one of those in the experimental group had a specifically Christian experience, no doubt spurred on by his Christian set and the Christian setting that he found himself in. This student writes, The meditation was going on all during this time, 
and he, meaning Reverend Howard Thurman, would say things about Jesus and you would have this overwhelming feeling of Jesus. Death looked different. I got the impression, the sensation, that what people are essentially in their essence that they somehow would continue to live. They may die in one sense, the physical sense, but their being in heaven would survive. But it wasn't all bliss. Two students grew so paranoid that they fled the basement trying to escape the experiment. One of the students that fled, Randall Locko, had this to say about it. I began to go into a very strong paranoid experience, and I found it to be scary. The chapel was dark and I hated it in there, just absolutely hated it in there. And I got up and left. I walked down the corridor and there was a guard a person stationed at the door so individuals wouldn't go out. And he says, don't go outside. And I said, oh no, I won't. I'll just look outdoors. And I went to the door and I went out. According to Timothy Leary's version of the events, he ran out of the chapel after Laco and safely brought him back inside. Now, according to Houston Smith, it was he who ran after Laco and safely brought him back inside. Neither Leary nor Smith mentions the other person, so in Leary he doesn't mention Smith, and in Smith he doesn't mention Leary, going out after Laco. Make of that what you will. Despite his momentary panic, Laco actually ended up finding the overall experience to be quite spiritually beneficial. He later said this during an interview with the BBC. It was a glorious sunny day. I remember seeing an elderly couple walking down the sidewalk hand in hand and that was the most profound and beautiful experience to me. This was an image of people who indeed loved one another and had lived their lives together. Everything in the world just seemed to glow inwardly with life. Everything was alive, and I don't mean just living things, but even inanimate things. They just lived. And I was seeing things like I had never seen them before. So for him, the experience was both confining and hellish, but also beautiful and freeing. The other student who fled the building would not calm down and actually had to be injected with Thorazine, which is a powerful sedative. But you see, there's a problem with that. Panky omitted the Thorazine shot from his dissertation, raising questions about academic ethics. Another matter for discussion is the way Leary obtained the psilocybin. I kind of go back and forth with how I feel about this. On the one paw, I support both the ideas of cognitive and spiritual liberty. On the other paw, Leary's actions would contribute to the larger takedown of the academic study of psychedelics. I bring this up because the Good Friday experiment was a new kind of frontier for the study of the science of spirituality, so to speak. That is why Leary ignoring academic protocol matters here. That's why ignoring the harsher moments of the experimental group's experience with psilocybin matters here. And finally, that's why Panky's omission of the Thorazine shot matters here. So I guess I'll leave us off with a question. At what point do these shortcomings contaminate the larger integrity of the experiment? Well, my friends, that's all I have for you this time. And like always, I'd love to thank you for stopping by. Please like and share this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, find me on Instagram and on Facebook, of course, if it all be your will. And I'd just like to say that I am one of those people who do believe that psychedelics can cause these spiritual and mystical experiences. But I don't think that that gives any of us an excuse to kind of shortchange legitimate research. Like, in my opinion, this experiment could have been the vanguard for any future experiment that would take place, especially today. But I also feel like there are certain things about it that makes it maybe not the best, uh, mostly the fact that Panky did discount the Thorazine shot and also discounted the fact that, you know, all, or eight, I should say, of the students did have really difficult and bad trips for part of it, even though the long-term uh, effects of the psilocybin were definitely beneficial, there's no argument there, I do think that we need to pay heed to these experiences and not erase them from history. I mean, th these are people's spiritual and cognitive lives we're talking about, and um, we have to protect that. Well, until next time, 
I'm Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by using your brain. Peace.